All right. Hello and welcome. Uh oh, I messed up everything. <laughs> this is just a temporary setup to do a quick demo. <clears throat> uh, today we'll talk about the applications of induction. So uh, we've we've looked at Faraday's law. We were looking at how how a changing magnetic field produces a, an electric field, and relative to the center of that field, we were able to figure out some more stuff, right? Uh, let's take a look at where we left off yesterday. In AV Physics C, here we are. Phew. So this is what we did. We looked at that, uh, uh, you know, even if we did not have a wire, a wired loop, okay, the field is still there. Uh-oh, I'm dropping frames. Uh, why am I dropping frames? Unless, control J, okay, that didn't work, show in folder, oh, that did work, okay, uh, stream is fine, okay, uh, are you guys lagging on stream, I don't think so, uh, it says it lagged a little bit two minutes ago, applications of what? Applications of induction. It's in the title. It's in the. It's in the title. Yeah. Uh, so we looked at this thing yesterday. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can solve this now. So the oops, wrong class. APC. The idea is that we we do this line integral. Uh, closed loop integral of e dot dl gives us the change in flux per per time. Uh, so let's see what we have here. Um, e times e times integral of dl gives us change in phi. Uh, change in phi. I'll charge you. He says. <laughs> uh, change in phi and uh, change in phi per time is the same as the area times change in b db dt like so okay that's because um let's imagine having that loop again or whatever your circle is um, that circle will definitely have a certain area and the uh, magnetic field in that area will change by a certain amount based on time and so doing this integral we have closed loop integral of dl well dl is is basically the tiny arc length in your circle and if you add up all of the DLs you get an entire circumference uh, an entire circumference worth so you get E times 2 pi R 2 pi R and on the other side we have the actual area and the area is pi R squared pi R squared times db dt and we can simplify the, the pi's go away, one of the r's goes away, and this gives us the equation for the electric field that we have. This induced electric field is the radius over two times db dt. Okay, the rate of change of the magnetic field times half the radius uh, gives us the electric field. Okay, and if I put a charge there, if I put a charge there, anywhere there, uh, at that radius, it's going to feel a force that is equal to F electric, which is equal to that electric field times the charge of that charge Q. And this will give us the mass times acceleration of that charge. Right? This, that thing will start to accelerate at some sort of force time, uh, uh, sorry, electric field times charge divided by the mass. And of course, uh, if the rate of change is nice and linear, if it's constantly changing at, with a linear slope, uh, then the electric field will be a nice constant value. And so it will constantly accelerate. Um, however, if the rate of change is like a power function as a function of time, if it's a, uh, you know, something like what we did yesterday where, where it kind of exponentially increased, then, then uh, the acceleration will also change as a function of time. 
So dl is basically just the length of the line the integral follows. Yes, the line integral of the circle we're making. It's a closed loop integral. Yeah. So when you when you integrate in a closed loop and you have a when you add up all the dl's, you basically get the circumference of the circle. All right. So let's take a look at what induction in action. Ooh, let's see if this will work. Ah, it's kind of dark. But here's my hand. Hello. Uh, what I have here is a giant battery. Uh, and I will connect to this giant battery to alligator clips. He's not a robot. Whoa. All right. We have connected it to our battery. Now, the battery looks big. But it's not, you know, it doesn't mean it's uh, it's ginormous in, in terms of voltage. Uh, this is only six volts. Six volts. All right, well, what do we have in here in this box? What we have is a special device that I made a long time ago. And the special device is basically a looped coil, right? And I've attached this looped coil to this simple circuit here, simple. Um, uh, this thing here, I know it's dark, but I need it to be dark because uh, we're going to show you wireless power transform uh, trans transformation, or also called inductive coupling. Uh, um, and so the light needs to be dim so you can actually see it. Looks like a module for Arduino. Uh, this is just these little things. These you can just buy actually. Yeah, I guess you can't buy them anymore. But I was going to say if you go to your local Radio Shack, you can easily pick them up. But uh, when they were going out of business, uh, you know, I bought a bunch of stuff from them. So I have a bunch of those. F. <laughs> yep. Uh, but I'm sure you can buy it from like Fry's or something. Uh, these are just generic circuit boards that uh, that you can um, that you can solder yourself, you know, attach a bunch of stuff to it. Uh, what do I have here? Well, I have an inductive coupling system. I'm using a couple of capacitors. And this black thing here that you see, it looks huge. Uh, can you see it? Uh, let's give you a little bit of more light. Oh, I can use these lights here. Or not. Uh-oh. It's not working. I think it's unplugged somewhere. I don't want too much light, just enough. Okay, it's a little bit better. Hey, it's me. Nice wireless headphones, Mr. How did you know I have wireless headphones? You can see it in the reflection. Ah, yes, they're the Sony MX3 1000. Okay, this black thing here is a transistor. It's actually the uh, heat fin. So if you build your if you build your own PCs and you bought your RAM, uh, you'll see that some nice uh, some nice RAM have uh, have these fins on them. They're for heat dissipation. So transistors usually get really hot, especially if you run them at higher voltage. This transistor is actually a five five volt, uh, I believe. I think it was five point something. Here. Uh, but I'm going to use a 6-volt battery because that's all I got. So uh, I'll only do this for a short burst. Uh, but I have this heat fin. Um, the fins will dissipate the heat outwards. I run my CPU at 1.5 V core. Wow, that is quite a lot. I run it at 1.35 uh, overclocked to like 3.9 gigahertz. All right. Joke, yeah. You need some liquid nitrogen cooling for that, huh? <laughs> I run it at base. I run it base clock. Yes, factory standard. Good job, Ed. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> I have a Mac. Ah, sorry, you can't overclock Macs. Uh, all right. Anyway, so what we're doing is that we're going to send in power from this battery. Recall that the battery is only DC. Right, uh, DC meaning direct current, which means the battery's voltage is always the same. Okay, but if I if I use DC voltage, 
then whatever is circulating uh, will be a constant value, right? So uh, now uh, what we have strategically made the wires looped in a circle such that whatever direction we have our current flowing through, we can use our right hand rule and a right hand rule number one and see that there will be a magnetic field that is through the loop here at the center. Okay. However, if the if the voltage is is constant, then then the uh, then the magnetic field is also constant. Uh, save the planet. Then proceeds to put in GTX 10 a 1060. Oh, <laughs> what? All right. Focus. Focus. If my voltage is DC, if the voltage is constant, that's going to supply a constant amount of current. And if my current is constant, then that will induce a magnetic field uh, that is, you know, within this loop that is also constant. But we know from Faraday that in order to induce a voltage, we need to have a changing magnetic field. Yeah, there's many loops. It's about 50 or 60. I think I, I can't remember. Uh, I, I remember using like a coffee mug and then I just wrapped it around the coffee mug a bunch of times. All right. So in order to induce a voltage, we need a changing magnetic flux. So how do we do it? Well, that's where the transistor comes in. This transistor it acts like a switch. Now imagine uh, Faraday's experiment. Recall that Faraday's, Faraday uh, observed a, a, a current in a system the moment he turned on and off the uh, the switch so the transistor is going to do that for me instead of doing it you know 10 or 20 times a second uh, it does it about about 5 million times a second um, F lag are you lagging uh, let's see Dropped frames detected 20% two minutes and nine seconds ago. Ooh. Why am I dropping frames? Let me close some streams and things. Close, close. Close that. Close. Now it's better. Okay, whatever. Okay. So. Now it's better, okay. So it's going to kind of turn the switch on and off five million times a second, five megahertz. Uh, is that a transistor at five megahertz? Yes. Uh, no, no, not giga, mega. All right. So essentially by turning it on and off many, many times a second, that's the same as having a, a f change in flux. The flux goes, you know, into or whatever it is uh, for at one point or one one millionth of a second, and then um, and then it uh, and then it goes up. Uh, Overclock. Uh, you spelled it wrong, so spell it right, and then the and then the robot will not block you uh, there, Jacob. All right, here is a secondary loop. Let me move this to the side. This secondary loop has a coil of wire, and then it's attached to uh, an LED. Uh, the mod is a cloud bot. It's from Streamlabs. All right, so we also have a capacitor. Uh, whatever energy I get going through, okay? If anything were to happen, uh, we also have a tiny, this, this part here is a, is a trade secret. Uh, basically, it's another diode. Both of these are diodes. One is called a light emitting diode, uh, which means it's a diode that sends current in one direction, but as the current flows through it, just sends you, it gives you light. Whereas this diode here is only going to control the current. I have that so that um, if I were to mess it up in any way, uh, this little one will die, give its life away, turning off the circuit so that my my LED, my high efficiency LED uh, will stay intact. Yeah. All right. Um, and so if I want short bursts, I can quickly charge and discharge. All right. 
uh, and the idea is that as long as the loops are aligned, right, and as long as the loops are aligned, then the changing magnetic field will go through the secondary coil, okay, and this will produce uh, an electric uh, current inside these loops that will go and run through the LED, lighting up the LED. What color is your... Uh, what color is it? Place your bets. Ah, yes. <laughs> well, you can use your stream points and make your bets. I don't know how to actually do it. All right, I need to darken it so that uh, you can actually see. Uh, we got um, five on red, white, ten on white, black, a black light. We got a red light, three on green. Interesting, interesting. Are these the only colors you can think of? <laughs> it's super high efficiency. All right. Uh, I do have some connector ports. Uh, if you're paying attention, uh, let's see, positive. We'll go here. I think and then we'll go negative we'll do it for a very short amount of time so the transistor doesn't blow up um, I don't even know if my battery still works so I haven't done this in a while hopefully it works here we go it is on currently the magnetic field is pulsating and voila as you can see well, as soon as I align the coils we get wireless light uh, let us go down so we have a gap here uh, of course, if I'm out of the uh, alignment, if I'm out of the alignment, I don't get anything, any flux. If I go in, I get flux. Okay. Remember rotating it. So if I rotate, 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 and it's vertically aligned like this, nothing is going through the loop. So we get zero light. Okay. And if it's, you know, perpen, uh, sorry, parallel like this, if the loops are parallel, that means the flux is 100%. Oh, lots of light. The closer, of course, the closer I am, the more light I get. Poor switch. What do you mean? The switch is doing all the work. Well, not, uh, yeah, oh, obviously, Isbio. Uh, lights, even your light that you get in, in your homes, you know, they're pulsating. Right? It depends on the frequency of your current. So this is pulsating really fast. I mean, it's pulsating so fast that your eyes cannot detect the difference when it turns off. All right. So as you can see, the closer I get, the more light I get. Whoa. If it's uh, oriented differently. Of course, as I turn it, take a look. As I turn it, as theta changes, you get less and less light. Okay. Uh, oops. You saw nothing. Uh, there we go. If I turn it, if I turn it. This, uh, so now we're aligned. Uh, there we go. We're aligned, and then and then light dims. All right, I'm gonna turn it off because it's getting hot. Bam. Yeah, so how does he know which way to have the light? What do you mean, have the light? As long as... Uh, oh, here, let's, let's see. Um, I know because, because I made it. <laughs> I guess that's the answer. Uh, those are the cheap Chinese slow ones. What do you mean, cheap Chinese slow ones? The LEDs? Oh, are the LEDs from China? Pro I mean, probably. Uh, that's uh, that's where Amazon gets all of its stuff. Yeah, this is how wireless charging works, right? Uh, you have uh, you have two coils that are aligned. The back side of your phone has a coil. And, uh, and when you align the coils together, you can send the power.
Is the light bulb circuit just taped with the electrical tape to the solenoid? Um, if you, here, let's take a look at it one more time. Oops. Oh no, <laughs> my thing closed. That is unfortunate. Um, this electrical tape here, okay, that's just to keep the coil together. Um, if you see this red stuff, that red stuff is all insulation, right? It's called lacquer. Um, so the actual copper inside, you can't really see it, but you would have to scrape this paint off. And when you scrape it off, you can actually see the copper inside, but it's insulated. And I'm just using the electrical tape to bundle the coils together um, so that so that they stay coiled up. Ah. Uh, it did, but it wasn't popular. Uh, it's more useful if you have Samsung. What? What do you guys want? With? You can put your headphones on the back of your phone, and it charges the headphones. But you need S10, aka latest phone. Yeah. So that is also inductive coupling or uh, using. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now uh, let's go and take a little bit of notes. Um, starting with the next slide here, some generic honors physics information here that you need to know, I guess. Uh, so generator, a generator is the opposite of a motor. It transforms mechanical energy into electrical energy. Turbine generators are used in power plants all the time. Yeah. So what are turbine generators? Well, you're spinning something, right? Typically, if you use water, kind of if you imagine the water wheel, uh, the water wheel system. I'm sure you've seen it in like biology class or something. I don't know. Uh, so when the water hits the water wheel, the water wheel turns. Now imagine that turning motion is now axled into a generator. Okay, so the generator turns, and what the generator turns is a bunch of magnets inside of a coil. So when the magnet is spinning, when the magnet is spinning, at one point, it sends the magnetic field into the coil, and then at one point, it is coming out and going uh, the other way. So at, at, from the coil's perspective, you have North Pole coming in and then North Pole leaving, and then you have South Pole coming in and then South Pole leaving, and it keeps on alternating as it spins around, and thus this alternating motion forces the electrons to move in one direction and then half the other time it moves in the other direction giving you your alternating current All right so what do you do with your alternating current well you send it through a full bridge rectifier and then convert it back into dc so that your so that your uh, electrical systems can use dc instead of ac do electrons have momentum uh, yeah, I guess they have velocity and they have mass. Is it not an induced current in the LED, which is a, which is in a smaller circuit? Yes, that's, I mean, you saw that the uh, LED part is completely independent of the, of the other system, right? So the other circuit thing that you saw was creating the changing magnetic field. And we were just intercepting the changing flux with our secondary coil which sent the electrons that are already inside of the wires to move. It creates a force onto them, which is the same as having current. All right, so here's our water wheel. Water wheel pushes it, turns it around. The turning motion flips. Uh, so as you can see, the, here's another model uh, where you can have a stationary magnet, where you can have a stationary magnet, and the turning motion turns your coil around. So this is the same thing. As you can see how um, through one face at one point, the north goes into from the right side to uh, from the left side to the right side. And then as the coil flips around, it goes the reverse way. Right. So this is all in your in your notes already. Um, unfortunately, we're going to have to skip the generator demos. So I can't pull out the generators. You can't play with the generators today. Uh, maybe when we get back to school. Uh, but this is what we get. Here's some important equations. Uh, 
Uh, virtual a turbine generator man is my sleep paralysis demon. What? Virtual simulator VRMS. How important? Uh, but not the location and the velocity at the same. Ooh. Is that Heisenberg's uncertainty principle? All right. So what is this graph showing you? Well, it's showing you the AC, in this case, voltage. Alternating current will produce alternating voltage. Ow. All right, I'm back in my seat now. I need to fix, all right, as you guys take notes, I'll fix my desktop uh, remote support generate code. All right, so uh, VIND, here's our VIND equation. So based on our coil that we have spinning around in our generator, N, what is capital N? Chat, what is capital N? Hmm. Number of loops, excellent. What is A then? Remember, it's a generator where the, it's the last slide, there's a generator where the loop is spinning around. It's the area of your loop, yes. And then we have B, that's the actual magnetic field, so whatever the, uh, the magnet is that you're using for your generator, okay? And then we have omega and then sine omega t. What could omega be? Ooh, think mechanics. Angular speed, excellent, it is the angular speed. Yeah, and we want to make sure that that the that the flux is going through, you know, as a as a cross product, of course. Therefore, uh, we take the sine at every point, sine of the vector. All right, and then omega is two pi f, of course. Uh, the angular, uh, technically, uh, it's called angular frequency. Uh, angular frequency omega yeah so omega times time gives you the position so your actual orientation and then sine of that will give you the amount that actually goes through your area the amount of B that goes through the area okay remember we want the area vector uh, or, sorry what and omega T is position so you got to start at zero sure All right, uh, here's some more stuff on generators. We don't really need to know all this stuff, so I'll skip it. Uh, but if you'd like to learn more, consider majoring in electrical engineering. <laughs> here's some other information you need to know. Uh, you know, uh, voltage is different across the world, right? Uh, in the Americas, we have somewhere between 110 and 120 volts AC. And our frequency is 60 hertz, so it, fluc it fluctuates 60 times a second. Uh, whoa, 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 AP student. Uh, careful there. <laughs> uh, well, watch your language there, buddy. Uh, yeah, EU, uh, now, P uh, if you've ever imported, imported video games back in those days from from let's say like Europe or something or European version or even certain Asian versions. Uh, PAL, PAL, uh, they have 50 hertz, five is zero. And so, uh, and so it looks weird when we, when we do it. If you have like a mod chip on your uh, video game console, you can play uh, video games from other, other parts of the world. Uh, they used to block it so, so that you could only you know, play Amer uh, games that are in American format, etc. Yeah, it's all in your head, Mystery Wizard. The eagle is not following you. It's just, it's just a picture. <laughs> uh, now, in, in Asian countries, Asian countries, the voltage is, uh, you know, twice as much, at about two hundred and forty volts, almost, right? Two twenty to two forty volts. So what you need is a, uh, is something that converts these higher voltages to lower voltages, so that you can use your uh, electronics uh, when you you know go travel uh, to other countries 
those AC adapters, well, something that actually converts the voltage, a voltage converter, which we'll call something else. It starts with a T. Transformer, yes, it is a transformer. All right. Uh, motors convert electrical energy into mechanical energy, blah, blah, blah. So now we're doing the opposite. Uh, we're going to have to skip this part because I can't pull out the motors and stuff for you. However, uh, what you should know, at least, is that motors are the opposite of generators. So similar to how we were turning using mechanical energy, if I go back to here, using mechanical energy to turn the loop in a magnetic field, this sends a different amount, a changing magnetic flux through the loop, generating the electricity. Well, we can do it in reverse and that we can use the electricity to spin our loop, uh, spin the loop around instead. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some other vocab that I'm skipping over these commutators and arm, uh, armatures uh, armature would be your the thing that is actually spinning around uh, the commutator is this uh, red circle thing that you see uh, there's also uh, different kinds like brush motors uh, basically you can do it uh, electrically or uh, to where where you can have an actual thing like this a, a circle thing that you see here in this picture that changes the direction of the current and so if you plug in a DC battery um, pack uh, it will still change it, it needs to change the direction of the current because remember that torque on your system uh, will always you know pull it back into shim so in order for for our loop to not stay in shim we have to strategically change the flow of current such that halfway across, after turning halfway, um, the current is going the other way so that the torque keeps on pushing the same direction and allows the, allows the motor to spin, right? So check your torque, uh, torque notes when we did torque with induction. Uh, blah, 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 here's Nikola Tesla. Tesla is the one who kind of made the first uh, induction motor. So let's give some credit to our boy Nikola Tesla. <laughs> well, when I say skip the vocab, that's for everyone in like high school. And then when I actually go over it, it's for everyone that may use it in the future. <laughs> uh, transformers, here it is. So this is what you're using. This is what... Uh, uh, sword hero alluded to uh, you might see this you know in your neighborhood there's a bunch of them um, these are things that change your voltage they convert their voltage converters basically and therefore what you have in your giant little black adapter thing that you connect uh, is usually a converter a transformer that's converting the voltage you know from 120 and usually uh, it'll go down to like 12 or 10 or even less most electronics use you know low voltage they don't have to use those high 120 volts even even so uh, when you up, there are, you know, up, step up, sorry, step up transformers and step down transformers. That just means that the primary voltage that is coming in will either be increased or decreased. Now, you're not getting free energy. There's no such thing as free energy. Consider watching Electro Boom's episode on uh, this kid who found free energy. <laughs> uh, there's no such thing as free energy. <laughs> yes, there is. All around us, Gibbs free energy. <laughs> Uh, no, there's no free energy. Uh, just use a wire and capture it. Yeah, if I can have a loop and just capture all this changing magnetic... If you spin your magnetic field around, I suppose. But that's not free, right? You used mechanical energy to get it. So nothing is free. Someone has to pay. There's no such thing as a free lunch. All right. Uh... Here is the uh, here's kind of the process of you getting electricity at home. Uh, at the power plant, you know, you're producing things that are very high voltage. So this is an example. It's about 12,000 volts. And then you use step up transformers. So you, if you're if you live near power plants, then you might actually see step up transforms, 
uh, stress rumors. But you, uh, you definitely might have somewhere in your neighborhood. I'm pretty sure, like every neighborhoods have these, or at least near, could be the next town over. But somewhere in your neighborhood, there'll be like a caged area, and in that caged area, this is where you have all of your step down transformers. Okay. So what what happens is that after the twelve thousand, it gets boosted up to two hundred forty k. Out in Victory uh, Trailhead. Ah, there you go. And then um, across the uh, freeways, so if you're if you're going across freeways, especially if you're on your way to like the I-15 or something like that, you'll definitely see these giant um, electrical poles. They're carrying the current. So they're carrying high voltage current, right? Super high voltage current. We're talking 240,000. Now, why doesn't like a bird that lands on these, uh, on these cables turn into KFC? Okay, why are birds able to kind of uh, land on it? Uh, well, it depends. So if you like jump up and not touch the ground and just grab the two wires with your two hands, then you should be fine theoretically, right? There's no voltage difference, or sorry, there's no voltage, which means there's no electrical potential difference between the two points in contact. So when the two legs of the bird uh, touches the wire, the potential difference is zero, therefore nothing actually flows through the bird. Yay. No, it's not because it's insulated. Uh, it's because there's zero potential difference. But if you touch the ground, then zapparuni, all of the current will go through you. And yeah, and we'll have KFC for lunch. What was it? Uh, it's 30,000 per milli uh, millimeter or something like that. No, you can't you can't touch the ground. <laughs> All right. And then uh, and then in your neighborhood, we will you know, we'll step it down and then um, and then you get to these poles that you see. Uh, the poles have these trash cans. Those trash cans are transformers. That's Optimus Prime there. Uh, those trash cans are actually converting your voltage down from from you know a couple thousand down to 120. So I can touch the wires as long as I'm hanging in the air. Good to know. Yes, theoretically, theoretically you should not get fried if you are not grounded. All right, and the last thing we'll talk about is the transformer itself. So what is a transformer? The transformer is actually Faraday's experiment. Oh my goodness. However, back in those days, we didn't have AC power, right? Faraday was trying to do it with DC, and therefore it didn't work. He needed a switch that would turn on and off. And with my system, I used a transistor to do all the dirty work for me. Instead of flipping the switch on and off 5 million times a second, the transformer did it for me. Um, yeah. What is cool is that because the transformer is changing the magnetic field back and forth that many times, you can actually use a radio and then dial it to that many megahertz and actually pick up a signal. Whoa! I think I remember doing this when I first started teaching in regular physics. <laughs> I didn't have AP in my first year. And I just taught them everything. I didn't care if <laughs> I didn't care if it was an AP. <laughs> Sure, they can learn it. <laughs> Wait, Mr. Z, if the pigeon has two legs on the wire, isn't it a circuit? Yes, but remember, Torben Peterson, um, the volt, the uh, potential difference between the two points in contact is zero. Therefore, the current going through the branch of the bird is zero current. No, it has nothing to do with the resistance. Remember the wire. Imagine the wire being a node. So if you touch, if you touch two points on the, in the same node, the voltage is zero. The potential difference is zero. All right. So uh, here's Faraday's experiment again, but it, this time we have AC coming in. The AC coming in will produce a changing magnetic field inside our iron ring. So at one point it goes clockwise, at another point it goes counterclockwise. And the clockwise and counterclockwise directions change based on the frequency of the alternating current. So if this is in America, the alternating current would be 60 hertz. So 60 times a second, the uh, magnetic field through the iron ring is going clockwise and counterclockwise back and forth 60 times per second. Okay, 
And as you can see here, between the left side and the right side, we have different numbers of coils or different numbers of loops. Zahertz, yes. Iron ring is actually a nether portal. What? Uh, all right. So we have a primary current. The primary current is from the source, and we have a certain amount of loops. And then based on the secondary uh, current, or sorry, secondary loops, and the number of secondary loops, the voltage will either go up or down. And based on a relationship, we can figure out if this is a step up or a step down transformer. Okay, so here it is. Here's the basic uh, equation. And that's the whatever voltage is coming in, voltage in the primary divided by the voltage in the secondary is equal to the loops in the primary divided by the loops in the secondary. All right, chat, question. Let's do a vote, let's do a poll. Uh, poll, where's my poll? Oh no, my cloud bot is not working. Oh, there it is, poll. Take a look at this transformer. Do you guys see it? Take a look at this transformer. Okay, so uh, is it step up or step down transformer? Vote one. So for step, uh, uh, vote one for up. Actually, vote up for up. Vote up for up. Add. And then vote down for down. Add. All right. And then let's go start the poll. Boom. Look at it. Go ahead and isolate your variable. Eat your vegetable, kiddos. Isolate your variable. Isolate the secondary voltage, Vs. Vs. Isolate Vs. Okay. If the primary, in this case, the primary number of loops is less, if NP, no problem, is less, then is VS bigger or smaller? Uh, what does it say? We No, we don't isolate. We use alpha. Alpha. What is alpha? How do you use alpha? What does that mean? Uh, All right, we got Nishank in the house. Nishank is finally woken up now that it's 12 o'clock. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Should we close it? We're closing it soon in 10. No oh, Wolfram Alpha. Excellent. <laughs> Let Wolfram Alpha deal with it, not me. Uh, I think he means the proportionality simple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's like... um. It's actually like a fish or like an infinity that's cut off. All right, closing the poll in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All right, let's see what the answer is. Well, this is what you guys put. Boom. Uh, up was the most voted option to the poll with 87.50%. Interesting. Uh, going back to one note, boom, there it is. All right, so the equation, uh, the equation gives you VP over VS, so primary, the primary loops, oh, sorry, primary voltage over secondary voltage is equal to primary loops over secondary loops. So if I isolate VS, right, VS is equal to, do the old swap Rooney, NS over NP times VP, like so. And we know that NP is a smaller number. If NP is a smaller number, then VP must be bigger. Uh, oh, here, I said that wrong. <laughs> if NP is a smaller number, then VS, uh, VS is a bigger number. Uh, there we go. Okay, so it's because the fraction is going to be a big, something bigger than bigger than bigger than one. All right, so it's a step up, a step up transformer. Yay! Wireless high five to the eighty-seven point five percent of you that got up. Yeah, VP is constant. I I, I put the arrow on the wrong side. All right, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I will see you next time.